Hey everybody, Mark Bacombe here from Microchip Minutes. And in this episode, we're going to use a 10-bit analog to digital converter with computation peripheral, or ADCC for short, to implement basic capacitive sensing. I've created a very rudimentary capacitive sensor using conductive ink on a piece of paper and connected that to one of the pins on the MPLAB Express development board. The sensor voltage will be routed to the ANC7 input of the ADCC peripheral. Every time we trigger the analog conversion from software, a burst averaging computation feature of the ADCC will perform 32 consecutive reads of the analog input voltage. Each read will be added to the previous 32 times, and then the final accumulated value will be shifted right by five bit positions, and this is gonna effectively divide the value by 32. We're actually gonna read a higher voltage on the sensor pin when the sensor is by itself, and a lower voltage when some object like a finger is introduced to the sensor, which will add additional capacitance in parallel with the pin. We will continuously monitor the sensor voltage and we're going to transmit that 10-bit converted result over the USB by way of the UART using the UART to USB converter on the express board to a computer running a terminal program. I have MPLAB Express opened in my browser in which I've created a new project for the PIC 16 f 18855 I've opened the code configurator and configured the USART peripheral as in previous videos to transmit at a 9600 baud rate and I've also enabled the use of printf statements by checking the redirect to STDIO box right here. That's all we need so let's start the clock. Using the default system settings, let's add the ADCC peripheral from the device resources list by double clicking on it. Highlighting the ADCC peripheral under the project resources, I'm going to make sure I'm operating in burst averaging mode. I'm going to use the system clock as the clock base scale by two to make sure my conversion clock shown here as TAD is two microseconds. I'll set my result alignment to right to give me a result value between zero and 1023. I'll set the acquisition time to 10, which means the ADCC will wait 10 times the ADCC clock period of two microseconds, so 20 microseconds before performing any A to D conversion. This is going to give any capacitances like our sensor or any internal capacitances on the peripheral time to charge to the input voltage. Down in the pin manager, I'll tie the RC7 pin to the ADCC input by clicking here under the RC7 column. Next, I'm going to expand the computation feature and set the repeat to 31. And this is going to tell the ADCC to read the input pin 32 times each time the ADCC peripheral is triggered. Every one of these 32 10-bit values will be added to the previous reading and stored as an accumulated value. I'm also going to right shift that accumulated value by five bit positions by writing a five in the accumulated value right shift pane. And this is going to divide the value by 32 or two to the power of five to give me a filtered value. Next, I'm gonna to wanna to go into the CVD or capacitive voltage divider features designed specifically for capacitive sensing and set the pre-charge timer to 10 times that ADC clock or again, 20 microseconds. Last step, let's go into the pin module and rename the ADCC input to something a little more meaningful like sensor. And that's it for the code configurator so we can hit the generate button. We're gonna click okay. Returning to the MPLAB Express IDE, we'll open up the ADCC.h file and scroll down to locate a function called ADCC get single conversion. I'm going to highlight that and then copy it. I'll now open uh, my main.c file and scroll down to locate the while one loop inside of the main function. I'll paste the get conversion function just before the while and change the argument to our rename pin, so sensor. Now the ADCC will fire off 32 reads of the RC7 pin connected to the sensor, but we want to know when those 32 readings have actually been performed. So what we're going to do is use this function here in ADCC.h called ADCC get current count of conversion. So let's go ahead and copy that function and then create an if statement to check for that condition. Let's print something inside the if statement to the serial port to display the filtered value. That value is stored and can be found by copying the ADCC get filter value function in ADCC.h and then we're going to paste that here as the unsigned integer value. At the end of all this, we want to trigger another ADCC read. Now, since this is core independent operation, our CPU is going to be looping through all of this code. So this will need to be inside of our if statement so that the ADCC trigger only happens when the previous burst averaging has been completed. So let's copy our ADCC get single conversion function here, and we're gonna paste that after our printf inside of the if statement. And that's it, let's go ahead and stop the clock. Clicking the make and program device button will compile my code and then download the .hex file. 
I'll drag and drop the .hex file onto the express board, which shows up as a drive, and the PIC16F18855 is now programmed. Now when I connect to the serial port using a terminal program like the one here, you can see that the ADCC outputs a value in the mid 400s when the sensor is by itself. And then that value is going to drop significantly, uh, so right here below 100, when an object like my finger is introduced to the sensor adding additional capacitance which is going to reduce the voltage present on that pin. For more project examples, to visit our wiki or to take part in the MPLAB Express forums, please visit mplabexpress.microchip.com. My name is Mark McComb. Thanks for watching.